Okay, what you're about to see um, was like one of my first and only paying jobs. I had another job that I actually got credit for. Um, and did this solely on the mini lathe. I have a pretty efficient um, method. If you look back in my videos, you'll probably find, I'm sure you can find um, the video making these nuts. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can scale it up to the, to the Pratt & Whitney 12 by 30 Model B lathe. And uh, well, let's see how that goes. Thanks, guys. Enjoy. Okay, this is the uh, project, the mini lathe project, and this is a 256 thread nut, and this is for uh, for a clockworks. It's, um, I believe, it uh, goes between. Uh, there's two of them. They go between the uh, sweep second hand. Not really sure at all. Uh, this was built just to store the ones I made. There's some larger examples and there's a, a super small example. But this one here in the center is, is the object to uh, produce. And I had a method on the mini lathe of, uh, of building these. And uh, it's quite effective. I was able to um, be able to turn out you know, quite a few of those. So I got a piece of stock here in a seven sixteenths uh, hex collet, and I have my material there. I machined it down to uh, get a, a round surface for indicating. That'll be faced off. I have, uh, I can't remember what size the drills are. It's a 256 tap here. And um, basically I would, uh, would drill the hole uh, about an inch and tap it. And um, make maybe two, sometimes maybe, I think get two nuts, sometimes three and um, redrill, retap, and carry on. Well, I'm going to have to find a smaller parting blade because the parting blade is wider than the piece itself and it's going to generate a lot of waste. So let's see if I can find a smaller parting blade. Well, let's just go look here. Okay, that's the same as what I have. Here's one that is um, forty thousandths. So we'll go ahead and get an edge on that, and uh, that'll be. One candidate. Let's see what else we have here. We have another one, I believe, is uh, this one's never been used, so we'll start with that one. Okay. So we will. Uh, Go ahead and use this grooving tool to uh, do the initial parting on this. Okay, face converter on. I'm going to 
change the direction of my uh, cross slide feed. And we'll set this up at 190 RPM. up by hand and initiate power speed Slow feed right here. See how this tool is centered now. going under the part. Back off the power fade. Bring the part up just a little hair. Feed this by hand. I believe I'm going under the part again. Raise it one more time. I still have a little knob there. And so now we need to set up for uh, for drilling. A Jacobs Chuck A one A on my MT three. And release the chuck wrench. And let me go find a spotting drill. Okay, I have a, uh, a quarter inch, 90 degree spotting drill. Give it the drill itself a little twist to assure that it is uh, let's find a better place for this look down at and bring this tool out bring this tool in
we need there. We got our drill bit for uh, tapping drill for 256. Give that a little rotation as I'm tightening it. Make sure even clamping. And we'll bring that up here. And we are at 190 RPMs. a little dull. Let's try a different. Once again, I'm going to kind of spin it as it's gripping. that does any better. And I believe that one's doing better. three quarters of an inch and make sure we're still on target here with the camera okay Okay, you know, I have a pen vise. And this is a, a Sterrett designation D. And I actually did this under power 
on the mini lathe. Kind of afraid to do it under power here. Let's see. And it's definitely not a straight thread, but with the uh, with the thickness of these uh, nuts. It's not going to be that, I don't believe uh, that'll be an issue. We may redrill that and get this started um, with the chuck, a sure starter, a straighter start. So like I said, this is the first time trying this on this machine. So, uh, you know. Probably would be better off putting this in the chuck on the tailstock and starting it that way. Um, but then again, to a certain extent, it's following the hole that the drill made. So, real quick, let's uh, take one of these off. and test that thread. So I'm down here. <laughs> okay. So basically we'll see if that'll we definitely have a have a good thread. Deep we left that. Okay, that's the entire length of the tapped portion of this tool. And our drilled hole was about three quarters of an inch. The tap depth is a sixteenth or about a half inch, sixteen thirty seconds. Okay, okay we'll gonna call that part one of the uh, of the two fifty six thread clock nut. Um, I'll get a thinner parting blade mounted on there. I think it was forty thousandths thickness, um, close to the thickness of these nuts. And the way I had it set up on the mini lathe, um, I could uh, basically, with what I have set up on the big machine now, I could, I think I could get three nuts before I had to uh, re-drill and re-tap. Um, one, neither, neither side of the nut needs to be chamfered at all. I, I, I put a slight chamfer on both sides, but um, I think the larger, I don't know that it even matters. Um, okay, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing.
We'll come back to part two and we'll see if we get, can't get some kind of production going on these nuts. Thanks, guys. Okay, now I'm recording. <laughs> it's been so long I forgot how to operate my camera. Uh, I had no intention of, uh, of recording this this part of this deal here. I'm uh, I'm just setting the lathe up for a for a job. I'm going to attempt to do something I used to do primarily on the mini lathe. And I want to see if I can't perform that same task efficiently on the larger lathe. So um, I installed my 5C collet chuck. And this is a Precision Matthews item. So I literally just took this out of the box and stuck it on here. It's been mounted before. But, um, and I have three black dots here and those are supposed to last time I used this those uh, matched up with these three dots so I uh, I didn't get it where I thought I needed it but anyway I got it on there I turned I ran a little bit and got some surface rust off the face of this chuck I got my um, 5C um, 7 16th uh, hex collet holder and turned this piece of brass down to where I had some flat and, uh, and I spun it. And you can see it says uh, it's about one and a half thousandths, but the needle is not moving and that is right out of the box now this is a uh what do they call it self it's not self-centering it's an adjustable an adjustable chuck it's got you can uh you can adjust for run out um, it's got four settings here and uh it's kind of the opposite of setting up a four jaw it's uh you want to loosen your highs and tighten your lows in this case but uh yeah <laughs> amazing